hi to everybody who's joining us. I'm Gary Lee. I've created the Empath Zone Group to share information and give support to empaths and information to even non-empaths. And being an empath is very expensive. I've got two co-hosts with me at the moment. Jennifer Harris, who does an enormous amount for this group. I don't know where I'd be without her. So say hi, Jennifer. How are you doing? Hi. Doing great today. I'm Jennifer, and I've been with Gary for about a year now and helping him out with everything. And my specialty is demonology, the study of angels, and have been doing this for over 20 years now. Yep, and you know so much that you put me to shame. (laughs) (laughs) Aww. Mm -hmm. And hi to Carol and Parcilla. And the other person of these lovely ladies is Mari who I've known for almost 10 years and who's helped me out in just about every project I've ever done. So, hi Mari, tell us a bit about yourself. Hey, how's it going? I'm Mari. Um, I've known Gary since 2007. It's been a long, long time. We've been on very many spiritual adventures and I pretty much specialize in uh, psychic attacks so we all and energy all... work too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we all have our areas of expertise. I'm sort of a jack of all trades. If I need information, I tend to find it and do what I need to do. Today's topic is going to be about demonics and negative entities, because it seems to come up quite a lot. And as it happens, Jennifer is um, a master in knowing about all these things, partly because of her own experiences and partly because she's done so much research. So let's start with you Jen what do you what do you think we should start talking about probably the differences between what are between demonics ghosts negative entities and I mean that is a very extensive subject really yeah you know there's there's many different levels of demonics as I'm sure a lot of people probably know this already but as there's a hierarchy similar to angels, like we have, you know, the throne angels and then it goes down the line to arches and guardians. Well, we have the same process with demonics. So we have demon lords, devils, and the everyday demon. And then we have the lesser demons, which are hard to tell between a lesser demon and a negative entity. And there are so many different varieties that will make your head spin. It's there like is. The, the Christian concept of a demon is very, very limited um, mm-hmm. because there are so many variations and nuances that you know, it's just very hard to just lump them all into one category. It's not possible. And, Correct. And it doesn't help you at all either. Yeah. Well, it also depends on what religion we're talking about is what type of demons we're dealing with. Because there is just as many different names for demons depending on what religion you are. Mm-hmm. That's right. And it may be a way to help simplify things, but on the other hand, it doesn't let you do a real lot of good because it's like you have to know exactly what you're dealing with in order to mm. know how to deal with them. Right. You can't just use a scattershot um, approach. Well, depends on how strong this demon or har- how high on the hierarchy that they are. Depends on what you can do to save yourself from them. True. So, so tell us a bit about the hierarchy. Do you know much about that? Well, the hierarchy starts with Lucifer, as we all know, the, the fallen one. Yeah. Which, um, from my my um, study, Lucifer wasn't actually the first demon. Demons came before Lucifer. This was the battle between light and dark. And demons started to inherit the darkness. And then that's when angels came into the picture and became part of the light to balance out the darkness. It wasn't about destroying the dark or demons because everything has its place in our our world and universe so 
we we're supposed to balance each other out, light and dark, because neither is good or evil. That's yes, true. It's all relative. And I will before before we go on, I do want to sort of bring up the fact that this particular realm is known as the realm of the relative, um, mm -hmm. where you got your yin, your yang, your light, your darkness, your hot and cold. Everything's extreme, and this is so we get to experience who we are. Um, and this is opposed to the realm of the absolute, where everything is light, all is one, and it's completely separate from this realm, um, even though it's still part of the entire um, cosmos, so to speak. Right. So whenever we're talking about the battle between light and darkness and demons and what have you it's it's always referring to the realm of the of the relative um, and this is a very important distinction because you can get bogged down in um, religious myths and texts which sort of make it seem like there's this major battle going on um, with God whereas God is really everything and everything is one and so if everything is one, technically, who's going to battle what? Exactly. This, this just allows us to experience who we are and mm -hmm. give us all the tools at our disposal so we can um, call the experiences forth. Okay, now that I've clarified that, <laughs> let's continue. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, the higher, you know, so we have basically devils, which are very close to a demon lord and that nobody really knows the difference between a devil and a demon lord they could be the same thing they could be two different things but they are pretty much on the top of their gene as far as demonics go then we have what we call a demonic which is basically they are the people that take care of the lesser demons they take their orders from the hierarchy, from devils and, um, sorry, <laughs> from the devils. And then they go and carry out these orders themselves, or they have their lesser demons that they have in their legion into the world and do what they need to do. Now, then the demons, they have their little deal that they're doing and they're ha kind of like what we would be seeing as a um, arch angel so it would be more like an arch demon so then we have the lesser demonics which are basically the footmen so they could be considered negative entities they could be rogue demons not taking orders or they could be part of the hierarchy and take orders to go out and do what is necessary to incite different things in our lives. Yes. And that's an interesting subject within itself. Yeah. Because if you believe in the concept of free will, then it means nothing can happen to you without your permission on some level. Mm hmm and the thing is we tend to give our permission rather unwittingly especially when it comes to negative entities and it happens more often than you might suspect so it does and you know we we view negative entities demonics as a really bad thing in a lot of ways but would you have the same experience if they had not come in and put a roadblock in your way? Yes, yeah, so if you got would you no, have learned your lesson? Yeah, if you got well, it's actually not so much a lesson; it's more about would you have gained the same experience if that roadblock had not been there? You would not have learned how right. to overcome it. You would not have learned um, what to do, and more importantly, what not to do. It's you can't you can't know how to do something and know yourself, and that's you actually do it. It's like mm -hmm. the old one where would you rather, you know, on a, on a commercial flight, have a pilot who's done the hours or read it from the from a book. 
Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or to be on a more risque level, it's like, you know, reading about sex and experiencing mm-hmm. sex. You know? That's true. And, you know, with with these negative entities and ghosts, the difference is that these ghosts and negative entities, they did not start out as a demonic. Okay? Right. A negative entity and a ghost that has done the, you know, has become very negative and violent, usually it's because they are frustrated and upset. They can't move on. They're stuck. And so they get angry. And when they're on that, when you are on that plane that they are and you are stuck there if you are not completely 100% loving what you're doing you're going to start becoming angry and frustrated and lashing out yes so some ghosts can become negative entities and the negative entities the longer they're doing it they're viewed more as demonic when in reality they're not and you need to go and fix the problem that's happening and help them cross them over or have somebody come in and do that in because fact, they, they yeah. need help and, and so many ghosts um so to speak when you're talking specifically about ghosts they don't they're sort of trapped in their own little reality that they've created and most of the time they don't even know that they are dead um mm-hmm. It's so they get stuck in this cycle because once you're in the astral levels, everything is instant and everything is real and it's their own private hell. And so, correct until someone helps them break free from that illusion, it's going to be very hard for them to understand what's going on, especially if they have been taught there is nothing after death or if you know they've been bad, they're going to go to hell or worse, purgatory. Right. These are all creations that have been, you know, created in the astral um, Mm -hmm. because there's a um, collective consciousness which has created because this is what the leaders have been telling people. Um, Right. it's It's all still an illusion and it doesn't really end until you become aware that you are really a light body and that you are not your body and you're able to sort of move past this particular octave level of um, vibrations or dimensions to a higher one where you know the greater reality is correct which you know the these beings there we are essentially creating our own astral level realm by our belief system and so everybody has their own pretty much their own realm in the astral levels and then a friend of mine always says learn to swim in your own pool before diving into somebody else's and that's what's happening uh, with these things getting stuck is that they instead of diving into their own pool and learning to swim in it are diving into somebody else's pool and it is easy to get trapped within your another person's reality in fact the person with the strongest imagination and creation force is the one that sort of rules the reality we've had a few questions here so joe one of our mods who does an amazing job has asked how do you move a spirit who insists on staying that's a really good question and basically you need somebody who has enough power and energy and light to make them realize that they are living in an illusion and it's time for them to move on. But you can't force it. All you can do is continually continually try and make them aware that they are no longer alive. Sometimes you can shock a spirit into understanding that they're not here or they, they don't need to be here. Sometimes if they insist on staying, why are they wanting to stay? What is the problem here? Help them work through it. Exactly. And often people get addicted to certain things in life. So they might be addicted to, you know, 
drinking, um, gambling, sex, and this is the sort of thing that they are continuously living, living over and over again. Um, right. It's like they're stuck in a loop, and part mm -hmm. of them gets sort of short-circuited, so they're not fully aware of what's going on, at least not straight away, because in the astral, time runs differently. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and I wouldn't actually, sorry, Gary, <laughs> I, was like, I wouldn't actually tell a spirit, guess what, you're dead. <laughs> nice. Okay, because nice. that would, that could cause them to become angry and pull back from you. You have to be able to let them know what their surroundings are, keep them into looking at, well, can you touch this? Does this feel real to you? What is going on in your life? How are you here? And then make them start to remember what's going on, and that way they can move past it. Yes, and often if you can make them see the inconsistencies in their reality, that things are not what they should be, then it's going to make a big difference. Right. Okay, Renee Sheridan says, Is it possible you've manifested a negative being from your own negative projections? great question and the answer is definitely in fact if you make enough energy and project enough energy for a long enough time you literally are creating what's called a elemental or thought form and that mm -hmm. thought form takes on the properties of the energy that created it correct but the other thing is is that um, in a lot of like hauntings that we see poltergeist activity it's usually somebody in the house that is actually still living that is doing this unwilling, unwittingly they're not knowing that they're doing it and there was a case study about this lady that kept throwing marbles down the hallway and they couldn't figure out why this was happening but every time she got upset it happened so they had to reassess and evaluate what was going on, and it actually happened that she was manifesting this. Yes. And it's not uncommon, though it is very hard to sort of get proof because you can't sort of turn on and off um, yes. at will. Exactly. Next question from Vanessa. How do you stop negative forces being attached to you if you are negative yourself because of depression? That, um, very good question. Um, it happens because of oppression versus possession. Okay, that's the next on our list to talk about. <laughs> Anyways. Mm -hmm. um, oppression unfortunately it's going to help or if you are negatively oppressed by a demonic or negative entity you are going to continue on that cycle of depression because it is wearing you down uh, the only way you can do that is discover what is causing the depression if you can't figure out what's causing the depression go to counseling make sure that you are taking care of yourself and doing the right steps to get better because the more well you are and the more you face your quote inner demons the less likely you will be attached by these oppressive entities well that's true but one of the things about certain entities is that they can also short circuit that particular um, desire to find out what's going on and keep you trapped mm. in a cycle of feeling like you're a victim and being bitter about certain things um, and enhancing your emotion to such a degree that you almost become crippled um, and that you feel that there's no way out. Correct. Joe is asking, does the thought form attach to its maker, or is it able to move away for its own existence? Basically, is it able to manifest itself as its own being after you 
um, yes. your thought caused the attachment? This is a interesting question because we are all creating elementals or thought forms all the time. And the interesting thing about it is not only attaches to us, but it goes out there and finds other people or situations that resonate with the energy that's created itself. And it feeds on those energies by creating drama. That's what its program is. And eventually it will return to you and create that situation, only it will be seven times stronger. So basically, it's going out on its own, feeding, and then coming back to you, its maker, which is going to basically be ten times worse than what it started out as, and then you won't know what's going on because of the fact that you didn't have this for an X amount of time and it came back to you. Exactly. There's a lag. See, in the astral, there's no lag. So we know when we think something and it's created, we say, oh, I did that. But if you're actually on the 3D level and you create, the lag could take so long for it to come back to you that you think, why is this happening to me? I didn't ask for this. And that's what makes it hard. Right. Um, and the, it, that lag is a big one because of the fact that we know that there's like over 5,000 years in galactic time. No, it's 5,000 years in... Earth time versus one galactic day. Yes, and it, it all moves at a very different pace, and it also depends which level you're on. But back to that thing on thought forms and elementals, that's also how karma works. Um, you know, there is no judgment of the universe or nobody keeping track. It's what you are sending out there, which eventually comes back to you, um, and that's why you get to experience things in certain ways, even though it might be years yeah. later, um, there is a way to overcome that, and that's to actually shift who you are and change your vibrations. So if you're basically, say, a criminal, um, and you're stealing from someone, and eventually you end up getting stolen from, that's the energy that you sent out coming back to you. Now, that's not mm -hmm. to say everybody who's ever got stolen from is a criminal, but anyone who's sort of in a certain um, mind frame can be susceptible to that sort of energy. Right. Remember, it, it um, tries to find situations sort of feed upon, too. That's true. Renee, yes, um, there is a difference between your own projection and an outside spirit or demonic. But Absolutely. the strategy for getting rid of it is is definitely different because of the fact that one you're dealing with something that you did not create the other when you create something such as this you are gonna have to face what happened to you to cause this to be created because otherwise it's going to continue to st stick around the other one is, you know, if it's an outside source, then you have to shield yourself and put a bubble around it, send it away, send it back to its, its source. And a lot of people can't do that with their own projection because you are its source. You have to heal what made it. Yes. And, That's... you know... Go ahead, Gary. They're taking responsibility for what you've created. A lot of people forget that they have this incredible power of creation. You know, life is a process of creation, and we are creating every day, whether it's being negative or positive. But a lot of people say, well, I didn't ask for that, and therefore they give away their power instead of saying, why is this happening? So um, it m makes makes it much harder for them to fix things because unless they actually acknowledge this is something I have created on some level um, maybe inadvertently um, maybe maybe it was something on the soul level they can't change it because they have given that power away to others correct uh, no, did you have a... anything to add to that Mari? no 
you guys are pretty much pretty much on it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but, um, Vanessa, yeah. Vanessa did comment about her depression again. I would suggest to go to counseling. Find a counselor that is going to work for you, for your belief systems that will be able to understand where you're coming from. Like, I have a counselor that is kind of new agey. And instead of doing medicine, he likes to do the natural remedies and facing your fears, basically. And so find a counselor. You know, you, you might go through 10 of them before you find the right one for you. But don't give up. And also in regards to your question, Vanessa, about putting a bubble around yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. But here's the thing. You need to make sure the bubble is filled with light, love and joy and come from a place of unconditional love because when you create something, the energy you put into it is what you're going to experience. And most people when they go and create bubbles, they're normally created out of a sense of fear rather than love and it's ineffective that way. Right. And the other thing is, is that you might not be able to find something to project yourself like love, um, unconditional love. Find something in your life that you love, that you enjoy. Focus on that. And when you start to become depressed or oppressed by other things, focus yourself on that happy moment, something that makes you smile. And make sure that you are focusing those blinders away from all the crap that's happening behind you. Keep your focus on that one memory or moment in time that made you feel amazing. And that will help you come through that. And Doug just made a very valid point. And some depression may be physical, like with brain chemistry imbalance. Correct. And even the food you eat or the clothes you wear or lack of sleep. Um, mm -hmm. If you're not sleeping well, that can cause meta depression, depression, and your body has a lot to do with how you are feeling. And if you know you go to counseling and they put you on medications and they work for you, great. I'm glad they work for you because there's so many different things out there that could be happening that you know some things don't work. Don't give up you can find something that works for you. It just takes time. It does. But the thing is that a lot of depression is also caused by negative entities which are either feeding off you as a food source or they consider you as a threat or they have been sent by something or some being to try and stop you, especially if you've got some mission which is important to try and shift the energy of this world. Right. I've seen that happen a lot. So, um, it's, And that brings us to the oppression yeah. over possession. Yes. Because, as we, as Gary has said, you know, there's a lot of things that are coming at you all the time. But how do we tell the difference between an oppression any possession though. Well, tell us, because this is <laughs> very important information, I think. So oppression is basically the word, you know, you are being oppressed, which is a lot of people that are under oppression, they are happy-go-lucky people or they are, you know, calm, and then all of a sudden they start getting angry and depressed and mood swings and as time goes on it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse now with a demonic oppression it's going to keep getting worse because it's trying to break you down it'll find your weak points and play on it so you'll end up with paranoia and physical ailments as well yes um what they're doing is they cannot 
possess you unless you have given them permission to possess you or you are too weak to fight them. Um, a possession usually happens when someone is broken down and then all of a sudden they snap out of it. The person might be angry and agitated and, you know, very dangerous looking. But you, most demons that possess a human being, you can't tell the difference between the demon and the real human because once they possess you, they possess the your memories and the way you act around people. So they could be, I'm not saying to, you know, go after all these narcissists and sociopaths and stuff like that, but there's a possibility that some of these narcissists and sociopaths are demonically possessed. It's quite, you can actually often tell if they are by looking into the eyes and you'll notice that the person that you see is not the person that you know. Right. Kind of like with my ex-husband. He um, had the oppression and then at the end he was possessed and he tried killing me. And I literally could tell the difference. His voice changed. His eyes were different. It scared me, to be honest. Yes. And at that point in time, there was nothing I could do but force the demon out. But since he didn't want to believe me and do the work, I had to leave. I could not be around him anymore because this thing was literally trying to kill me. Indeed. And that's sort of basically not believing is only just like not acknowledging and giving your permission on some level for it to continue. Mm hmm. So. Exactly. And the other thing about oppression versus the um, possession oppression is external and possession is internal. Correct. So you'll feel, you'll feel things coming at you, which causes you to get upset and angry and paranoid yeah. until the possession happens. And then everything is like, you're projecting all of this instead of pulling it in. Now, now uh, oppression also could be classed as psychic attack um, yes. and psychic attacks always target your weakest link, which is mm. a point I think I made in my last um, pod podcast. So, anything that you have like guilt, uh, bad memory, childhood trauma, um, you know, anything that is considered to be a negative to you and a chink in your armor, then they will focus on that and magnify it. And that's what wears you down. Mm -hmm. And healing that is the key to stopping oppression does that what you think about that too Mari pretty much it's just we ha all have trauma from when we were growing up there's certain things that happen to us and things that we hang on to and it gets to the point when we're older and now we have to deal with these things and a lot of the times it's just very subconscious to the point where we don't even know where half these things um, come from like let's just say for instance you're in a constant constant stream of bad relationships and you have no idea why or mm. you have friends and they always betray you things like that it's always goes back to where what happened when you were growing up and unless you realize what's going on these things will always follow you and the negative entities will always use these against you to the point where you don't want to be here or mm. the your negative feelings are just consuming you and that's what that's actually where they want you to be to the point where you can get possessed and it's possession is not all that common but the oppression is very common so correct yes and <laughs> possession is something to be taken very seriously and you've got to be careful if you're saying someone is possessed because that can open up a can of worms which which may not be correct so you've got to be mm. got to make sure that you're doing the correct um, um, thing really um, right like when I go and I assess something and somebody is like well you know this person has an agent demon att attached to them 
So I talk to, talk to them and say, okay, what is going on in your life? What is happening in your life? Is there a way to, you know, rule things out? And a lot of times we can find a physical means, a reason that this is happening and it's not demonic at all. Correct. Um, in fact, a lot of people will blame demons and negative entities when in fact it's absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, this this is a real problem because by creating that sort of situation, you can actually attract negative um, beings and entities in that sort of sense. Mm -hmm. so you exactly. have to be really, really careful. Um, it's it's hard to find somebody who actually can give you a accurate assessment. Um, mm -hmm. Whenever I have a question like that, I always go to Jennifer. And <laughs> she she has special skills, so um, she, she can definitely help. And often she'll find that it's not a demon, so it makes a big difference. And when it is a demon, then it's different process of what we go through to help the person. Then what be? But we have to make that assessment first and foremost. We're not going to jump on the that train of everything that is happening is actually demonic because there if you go after a demonic when there isn't one you're just causing a whole nother problem because we're not facing the real problem that's going on we're dealing with this other thing it's like fixing the symptoms instead of the root a lot of times people only want the symptoms fixed and not the root okay. of the problem so these pr problems are constantly reoccurring Let's just say you have like, you know, you have this, you know, a psychic come in and say, hey, you know, I've cleared out your house and you're good. And then yet six months later, you're in the same boat. That's because the personal work that needs to be done, it wasn't done. And that's right. why those things keep reoccurring. And that self-work, you know, that self-healing, it is, it's really hard to do. It's and a lot of effort. And if you're not keeping up, if you're not keeping up with yourself then there's no way we can clean your house out and keep it safe for you for the rest of your life because you have not done the work and you're still bringing these things in. Um, Renee is asking, how can you tell if the negativity your experience is your own stuff or outside entity? Well, sometimes they can be one and the same. Remember, we call forth these sort of experiences to ourselves, and that might be our thought processes. And so, if we have a really traumatic event, we tend to fall into depression because of the fact that trauma causes depression, and that may attract a negative being which is feeding off that negative energy. And mm -hmm. so the two could be linked hand in hand. Right. And so if you're dealing with this, it's like if your psychic senses are underdeveloped, practice. But you also have to assess yourself and say, okay, this is how I was feeling like five minutes ago. And now I'm feeling exactly. this way. Is this my feelings? Or is this something that's outside source? Um, you know you best. And yes. when, if you assess yourself constantly, like, okay, I'm happy today. Great. I am going to do this. This is great. Five minutes later, you're crying. Why are you crying? What is going on? You were happy five minutes ago. Did you have a thought? Or is it something that is coming in and attacking you? Or is it something like, um, as I was saying, trauma? Sometimes when you have a lot of trauma which you've never had a chance to clear, the slightest setback can send you spiraling into depression and you have no idea why. Um, right. And clearing that trauma is important. Now, from a bark flower remedy perspective, <laughs> I found that um, the Star of Bethlehem is amazing for clearing trauma and actually you can cure depression and those sort of spiraling feelings by just taking it. 
Um, and yes, the others are laughing because I always revert to Black Flower Remedies, but they work, believe me. They work. Actually, the Star of Bethlehem is basically my go-to. Um, I use that one almost as much as my Rescue Remedies. So. <laughs> nice. I like uh, using the Star of Bethlehem and the mustard, especially when I'm having a nice day, and then all of a sudden I am just in this super negative phase that just comes out of nowhere. It's very mm -hmm. helpful. And yep. speaking of mustard, mustard is the remedy that actually protects you against a negative entity or negative energy space that you're in. If you're, if you're just walking along or you're working and all of a sudden you feel depression and there's no known causes um, from it, chances are you've either had something negative appear around you or mm -hmm. you've walked into some place which has had some sort of past trauma. But even some lands can be cursed. Um, Correct. And mustard is the remedy which protects you against it. So there's definitely... Um, I think the important thing is, is that there are many variables and there's no um, either or answer here. And each case should be assessed on their own merits. And... That's, that's what we are very good at doing. We can work out what's going on. If it's um, oppression or possession, or if you're under attack, or if it's something that you need to heal. Um, but it's really important to realize that everybody is completely unique and their situation is unique. Right. All right, the next thing is we were gonna talk about is summoning. Summonings is when you purposely or even non-purposely summon a negative entity or demonic. And, I've known uh, way too many people that just do this. It's very annoying. It, yes, and you know, I've, I've done some research this last week, and there's a couple of names that has come up with the big pictures, you know, big names that have been coming up so much. And one of them is the Ouija demon. So sorry. Yes. Um, rule of thumb, though. Do not say a demon's name out loud unless you are protected, because there's a possibility that you saying that name will summon it to you, because you have its attention now. Because demons and many beings are tuned to their name. And when you mm -hmm. say their name, you will draw their attention. And I know this, I, I'm attuned to my name. So if someone's talking about me, I will pick up on it. And I will normally mm -hmm. track down who it is and I will find out what's going on. Um, and so demons are very much the same. So be very careful um, with names because if you say a name, even if it's in... Um, a joking sense you might just well be invoking and summoning the theme into your life and if it decides that it has something to gain from being around you it could cause trouble right and so you know there's cer certain rituals depending on what religious practices we're talking about or spiritual practices you can summon angels, demons whatever, what have you the problem with summoning gods and angels, though, is they are very vain. <laughs> and, yes. and so oh, you summon something to you. And if they, they come, first of all, you need to thank them for coming to you, first of all. Second, if they do anything for you, you need to be humble and thank them. Because of the fact that if you do not, they're not coming back they know that you're not grateful for their work. And if they do come back, that will be, they'll be coming back begrudgingly and make no mistakes. Gods and angels and demons, of course, they are real. They are out there and, and you can't prove it scientifically, but those who have seen them and experienced them and have memories of them will know for a fact that they do exist. So don't mess around with them. <laughs> So, you know, if you're going to be summoning demons, rule of thumb, 
first of all, I wouldn't recommend that whatsoever because you're inviting this negativity in your life. The other thing is, is demons never do anything that doesn't benefit them. So you might think that you're getting what you want now, but in the long run, it's going to cost you and everything's going to go south. It always does. Very few people have the ability to make a agreement that is in their benefit. Right. And, you know, I've come on... Sorry, go ahead, Mari. A demonic entity will only bother if it's worth the while, and they will always come out ahead. Because it's like, if... Let's just say, you know, I'm a demon. It's like, well, you know, I could bother this person. And if it's going to pay off, then they'll keep bothering you. But if it's Mm -hmm. not, then they'll pretty much move on. Yes, rule of thumb, it has to be worth the trouble. If mm-hmm. something is not worth the trouble, then they will not pursue it because energy um, is being used up and on these realms there are limited energy sources, which is why they feel of people. Mm-hmm. So let's the just say thing... that you're under constant demonic oppression yeah. and that's because, you know, either through a cycle of a catch-22 thing where you're in a negative space and at the same time they're feeding you negative thoughts so you're in this constant you know negative battle that's why they'll stick around because it's worth their while so it's all about understanding how to make it not worth their while so they'll move on True. exactly and generally the easiest way to get a demon or negative entity to move on is to come from a place of um, joy and love and you can say to it okay you can join me but only if you join me in love, helping others, um, being you know, light, well, mm. being being joyful, light. Because <laughs> just because you're light doesn't necessarily mean that you're positive. Uh, exactly. And this goes for angelics. Not not all angels have our interest at heart. I can okay. vouch for that. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> But the other thing with with this is that I've come across some cases that they have summoned a demon to give them certain gifts. Let's say you summon a demon and say, I want to have uh, clairvoyance, okay? Well, it's going to go south. You're going to see things that you don't necessarily want to see. It's You're going to have a lot of problems. They're going to keep coming back at you expecting something that they want from you and you have basically bargained with them to have this site for whatever they decide that they want from you the problem with this is when we go and cleanse a person it's hard to do that because once they lose that clairvoyant sight because it wasn't technically theirs a shadow um, demon who's been around on this planet for a long, Centuries. long time, um, millenniums actually. So, no. and we've all we've all met him. We've all had um, physical um, communications with him. And as as far as you know, demons go, you know, he's a amazing example of what to be aware of and what not to do. And what's interesting is that him and some of these other demonics that I have actually met were willing to help us and talk to us to explain some of this stuff which is an amazing opportunity for us to learn what's going on because if we didn't have these communications we would have been you know going around with our hands out in the dark not being able to see what was going on and you know Omen and another one I'm not going to say his name because I don't want I know his name is very, very strongly connected to calling him. And he explained to me, you know, what was going on. And he, they've told me stories which were mind-blowing. <laughs> and yes, they are real. And they have proven themselves to be real. It's not just some, you know, bored housewife sitting at the end of a computer saying, <laughs> I'm so-and-so. They can actually come and visit you and you can feel and see the effects. Omen used to go and possess people's cats and freak them out. 
Yeah, he, he, he Gold, really... cold spots, opening vortexes. It was, yeah. yeah. I spent like two years running after him, cleaning up some of his messes, and it drove me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now, somebody asked before, you know, have I heard from Omen? And all I can say is that he's kind of missing in action um, at the moment. No doubt he'll return one day, but for the moment, we have no idea where he is. Yep. And. You know, it it's for the best, honestly. For yes. right now. For right now. Um, he was for a demon, you know, he was in a very bad place and he needed the time off and space to reevaluate himself because there was a lot going on. Indeed. So we're coming up to the hour. Um, any final words or anything that we need to cover quickly? I don't see anything in the comments, so... Okay. Well, I'm just going to reiterate that the key to defeating anything negative is coming from a place of unconditional love and light and joy. And by unconditional love, I'm not talking about seppy romantic love. I'm talking about non-judgmental love. It's, you know, basically, I accept you for who you are. I bless you for giving me the gift that you're giving to me and the insights um, and I ask that you go in your way unless you want to join me in love and peace and I chalk that up to the way I explain unconditional love is a mother or father's love for their child they mm -hmm. would do anything for them no matter what they do in life they will still love them absolutely and so don't forget we do have a YouTube channel where we will be um, loading this podcast and previous podcasts up on there and it's got other information like psychic attacks and um, other topics of interest in fact if somebody wants me to do a YouTube topic um, which I haven't covered just let me know and I can create a video for you and don't forget we have websites like empathsupport.net and empathsupport.com and we have personal sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions. Stop by and say hi on our chat room. It is up and running now on the site. Uh, okay. You can look for the events on the Facebook page, Empath Zone. Yes, we are going to try and make this a regular thing. So if you have any particular topics or questions, please let us know. And, and we do have the closed group, which is the paranormal... Discussion sorry, group. Discussion group. Yeah. If you would like to come on over and join, we can and tell your ghost stories. Yep, and it's, it's already growing. It's already past a thousand members. It's only about three months old, so... Um, we encourage, and you'll find out a lot more about this information that we've been talking about because we all have amazing stories to tell. Thank and you. Gary will be doing his blog on the Paranormal Group as well. He's been doing that. You can search his name and look at his blog too. It's in the files section as well if you missed any of it. Indeed. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you, Jennifer, for your amazing knowledge. Thank you for having us. Here. <laughs> and thanks, thanks, Mari, for monitoring and chipping in. Glad to be here. Thank you, okay. everybody, for joining us, and we will see you next week. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, here are some others you might find interesting. If you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear about them. Leave a comment, and maybe even a like. I rise like a phoenix.